There are seven billion of us in the world today, and we're facing some huge problems. The talk doesn't help someone out of poverty. Awareness doesn't reduce pollution or grow food or heal the sick. That takes doing. The solutions are here. Great inventions that generate clean energy, that make fresh water, that improve our health. This is a story of what we've been doing. I'm Manoj Pargav, the founder of Five Hour Energy. Have you seen this little bottle by the cash register? Five hours, that's a weird amount of time. But I can't drink any more than this. I don't have the energy. Top 10 Rick Perry excuses. I had a five hour energy drink six hours before the debate. Oh, no. I have this idea for this drink. Within two months, we had it on shelves. And it was growing bigger and bigger. And all of a sudden, it became one of the largest consumer products in the world. Five hour energy. Sales got up 12%. Yes. Sold over a billion and a half. 90% of the market share. Just cracked the Forbes billionaire list. But I realized, oh my God, we're making a lot of money here. What do I do with this? <laughs> I'll tell you how we work in our company. Somebody comes to me with a project or something needs to be done, and I, the first question I ask is, is it useful? How is it useful? Okay. And if it's not useful, it better be entertaining. <laughs> and if it's not useful or entertaining, there's only one other basket left, and that's useless. Five hours is a lot of things for me because it's also the enabler that gives us an opportunity to do things that other people can't do. This was our first building, which is really more five-hour energy. And then uh, we bought this whole thing. Now we have 10 buildings and 25 acres. One of the buildings out of the 10 buildings is an invention shop, which is called Stage 2. My approach to things is, let's do stuff, invent stuff, make a difference in other people's lives. Stage two works in the area of water, power, health. Our goal is very simple, to deliver innovations which can directly impact humanity. And the only way to do that is to actually go fund it. Our view is, if you invent stuff that can be used long term, it's probably the most fundamental change you can make. We've put an infrastructure together so that great inventions help the poorer half of the world make their lives better. That's what we define as a great invention. Yeah. That's the software change. Yeah. Incredibly, it doesn't take enormous amounts of money. What it takes is just doing the right things and inventing the right things. My name is Billy Talley, and I run the engineering and operations here at Stage 2 Innovations. Manoj truly believes in giving back. One of his ways that he believes in giving back is coming up with innovations to help people. Stage 2 is filled with tinkerers, guys that, in their garage, they don't have cars. They have stuff they're building. You should see how I got hired. I had actually built a nail gun powered pogo stick, and they thought I'd fit the job well. And these guys are in heaven. I mean, I think they would work there if I didn't pay them. All right, cool. When Billy first came to us, I said, Billy, whatever you want to buy, go buy it. I think he was in shock because you never tell a guy who likes tools if he can buy whatever tools he wants. Uh, we have a very, very uh, well-equipped shop here. There's not much we can't build ourselves. Manoj has expressed many times, if it doesn't make a big difference, find something else to do. Life is too short to, to spend it doing things that don't have a real impact. We're here to make a difference. If you want to do something for the poor half of the world, be here. 
If it doesn't make us money, but it really changes the lives of people, we're still going to do it. We have the wherewithal to make it a usable product so that people throughout the world can use it. We strive to be fast to failure. We're going to take something and we're going to run as fast as we can and do what we have to do so we can determine whether we're going to go forward or we're not. These are items that we want to bring out on a large scale that he truly believes in. In order to make this, if we didn't have this shop, it'd be weeks out. Uh, these guys can program it and make it probably in a day. That part is really, really important. We just concentrate on those things that are going to be incredibly useful. And if you come up with something cool that's not, we don't do it. I have no interest. I don't want to be cool. I actually, I'm never going to be cool. <laughs> so <laughs> that, 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 that's long gone. My job, I think, is to make complex simple, whereas it seems a consul consultant's job is to make simple complicated. Uh, we, we use some experts and consultants sometime, and usually when a science guy says it can't be done, to me that's validation that it can. Uh, so it, it, it's a different, because you, you, I mean, we define stuff, like expert. What's an expert? Expert is something, someone who knows everything that was. He's really good at what was. And if you ask him about what will be, he says, no, no, that can't be done, because I'm an expert on what was. Well, wh why do I need you? Because if I wanted to do what was, I don't have a business. So, you know, we, we look at, we do talk to experts just to make sure that maybe they've thought of something or the history of the, that area is something that we haven't thought of. But we really don't rely on them for the future because that's just silly. To me, the largest area of work for the future, energy and water are the real solutions to health, livelihood, all of the stuff that goes above it. Most people don't realize in, in rich countries, but half the world either has no electricity or electricity two, three hours a day. Everything requires energy. So you try to look for that which is the one thing that will lead to benefits that are across hundreds of things. So human mechanical energy is so amazing. Why can't we use that to create energy? So we've invented a hybrid bicycle that you pedal for an hour and you have electricity for 24 hours. We call it free electric. The free electric, I think, is the coolest of all our inventions. Not just because it just looks really great, but it's so simple. It's sort of what we try to do is make things simpler and simpler. And yet it's gonna affect, maybe have the largest effect of anything in the last hundred years. The reason is, for the poor half of the world, they have, have electricity 24-7. Electricity is the greatest enabler there is. And we've kept half the world out of it. This enables all of these people who have not been part of the Industrial Revolution they're still living as if it's 2,000 years ago. All of these people now can become part of a productive society. And this is what will enable them. This solves the problem no matter what happens, whether it's sun shines or cloudy or night or whatever it is, anything happens, you have electricity. You're never out of electricity. Also, if you look at worldwide, the other side is really interesting. Hurricane Katrina was a Category 5 monster that became the costliest disaster ever in the U.S. If a disaster happens, if Katrina hits or some big storm hits, and we've all been through where you had no electricity, the one thing you don't want, you want your cell phone to be always available. You don't want to be out of touch. And you don't want to be in the dark. The worst is being without a cell phone and in the dark. <laughs> so you're alone in the dark. With this, it can never happen. What people normally do is they'll get a generator, diesel generator. But the problem with the diesel generator is when disaster hits, there's no diesel available. You have this, you will never run out of electricity. And you never generate any pollution. So half the world is not going to generate pollution in their homes. So if you pump for an hour, you're keeping maybe a pound of CO2 out of the air. Right now, we're pumping about 
25 billion pounds of matter up in the air every year. And you figure sometime that's going to make a difference every year. So what this does is you have electricity for all these people and it's mechanical. You work for an hour, you have electricity for 24 hours. The only side effect is you get stronger and healthier. There is no other side effect to that. That's the ideal invention. That's why simple stuff is the greatest because it impacts everything and it doesn't have unintended consequences. There really is only a, a few components. You have the basic frame, you have the bicycle gearing, uh, you have the flywheel, you have the battery, and the generator. So it's, it's very, very simple. You know, there's not a whole lot to it, and it's just like riding a bicycle. You know, right. after you get going, Let's see if I can it's do pretty it. simple. Okay. So this is this the right gear for yeah. starting? Yeah, well, that, you're, you're in second gear, actually, so you're a little bit tall. So it's like driving your car away in second gear. Well, actually, I can see it there. That's a better. You lean back. Yes, that's the whole part about the reclining well, side. That's pretty cool. With human energy and working out a lot of the efficiencies, we're able to go and power 1,050 equivalent watts of lighting and energy power. That's like being able to, to power 10 100-watt light bulbs. I mean, it's a lot of light. Wow. So when, when does this start to get to a point where it lights up everything? Well, actually, right about now, be any time now. There, you there go. we go. All right. Is that from me? Yeah. Just doing it here? Yep. Actually, this isn't bad. This is No, it's not bad at all. This is like where you would set a bike if you were going to exercise? Yep. And with that, you're still able to charge your cell phone. You're able to uh, charge your tablet. Um, you run a small fan. You know, it really kind of puts some of these things into perspective. Pedal for an hour and you can have lights, charge your phone and everything else throughout the night. This is the cheapest, most practical way of getting electricity throughout the world. No matter where remote location you are. So now all of a sudden all this whole economy of the, all of these poor that were not contributing anything to their outside world, now they're all bringing it up. All of a sudden they're on the internet. They're getting information on, on uh, all of a sudden they're getting educated. So the, the real thing is to get the, the poor out of their poverty. And one of the basics is energy. I mean, think about it. The poor half stay the poor half because they have no power. They have no energy. That's one of the most fundamental things. That and water. Those are the two biggest things that poor person really needs. Somebody asked me, you know, in the interview, I said, what, what does an entrepreneur really need? So I said, they only need two things, common sense and a sense of urgency. That's it. And they asked me, who, they, who should we learn this stuff for? And my answer was, from your mom. Because she's probably done more management than your MBA professor. You know. Because... She's got a budget, she's got all these kids running around, hard to manage. All of this thing has to be done every day, seven days a week. Now that's work, that's hard work, that's learning on the job. No matter where somebody stands on global warming or that whole issue, pollution is a problem, I don't care who you are or what your scientific uh, belief system is, we know that that's bad. We need to get rid of it. Is there a way to get totally clean energy that's sort of bullseye of all answers with no pollution and unlimited energy? So our first question was, where's the energy? And there's only one answer, and that's right here. A few miles underneath us is unlimited power, unlimited energy. You know, a few miles down, deeper you go, the hotter it gets. You take that energy and you bring it up. Unlimited, pollution-free. Is there a way to bring up just the energy, just the heat? 
You can't use copper wire because it'll melt. So we found this material called graphene. Graphene is a substance that is really made out of graphite, which is like pencil lead, right? And what they discovered was that if they take one molecule layer at a time off this graphite, that's called graphene, okay? And it has incredible properties. It's 100 times better conductor than copper. It's lighter than air, stronger than steel. It transfers heat really efficiently. If you put 100 degrees here, you get 100 on the other side instantly, and the middle is completely cool. So the heat that you put in gets all the way there. Whether you go 10 feet or you go miles, you could bring up unlimited energy from deep underground to the surface, pollution free. And so I approached the graphene guys and I said, could you make me a string? And they looked at me like, why would we make a string? You know, I said, look, a string is the most rudimentary technology, right? If you have a string of something, you can make cloth, you can make walls, you can make rope, you can make a cable. So if you make me a string, I'll put those strings together and make a cable. Then I'll put the cable underneath the ground. And that cable will bring up the heat. And so at first they were a little wary because it seemed too simple. They have already made the first set of ropes for us, the short ones. They've tested it and found it to work perfectly fine. We're using that and working at Stage 2 in Michigan. Stage 2 has a platform we are building where we'll test everything out. And then that product will be commercially manufactured and propagated from Singapore. This would be the greatest invention maybe ever. Because if you can get unlimited energy from underneath the earth, pollution free, that's everything. That's everything. You have no pollution, you have no fossil fuel issues, you have no, um, you know, CO2 coming out, uh, greenhouse gases, you know, none of that. All of that is gone. Here's the answer. Yet no money, no research, no resources are being put to this. So this is a sort of a, a teaser to say, look guys, in your country, you want energy security? Do this. You have unlimited energy without having to import anything. Now, some countries are not gonna like this very much because those who export, you know, fossil fuels are gonna be pretty upset with me. Um, but I've kind of transferred all this technology, all of our thoughts to Singapore so that there's a, there's a, a place that's, that's neutral that is then going to give it to the rest of the world. And so this is to encourage people to say, look, if you want energy security, put resources in this. Energy is the great equalizer. If energy was plentiful, the poor wouldn't be poor. Our concern here isn't to make people rich. Our concern is, can we get them to make a livelihood? Can we get them to be healthy? Can we get them clean water? If you can get it to that level for the people that don't have it, that's an enormous benefit.